So what we have here is the Survey Master. We have a hard coat stucco, so we're not going to use the Tramax moisture meter, which is the larger moisture meter that you would use on EIFS. E -I -A E-I-F-S. And uh, so what we'll use is the uh, Survey Master protimeter, and then we'll use an extra set approach. You could use something like this if you wanted to, but for just a little bit more money, you buy one of these because it's just easier to handle and use. The tips are a little bit sharper for better readings, and it plugs into the side of the Survey Master. mirror so that way we're able to look at the base of the the stucco the termination of the stucco we're looking for the weep screed make sure there's holes in the weep screed so uh, so it'll work properly use a screwdriver you know either a phillips head flat head what we do is we remove some of the fixtures or outlet covers and what we're doing is verifying the type of stucco that's in place just confirming that it is a hard coat stucco and, uh, hard coat stucco is typically a half inch to three eighths inch uh, thickness i mean five eighths inch thickness so half an inch to five eighths inch thickness and it'll you'll see the cementous material if it was eaves like a true eaves the stucco is just a synthetic stucco on the outside and then when you got behind an outlet cover or, or fixture or something like that, you would see the EPS board, uh, expandable polystyrene EPS, and anywhere between one inch to four inches, no more, never more than four inches. And then that way we would use a different type of moisture meter on that one. So we're going to take a, a hammer drill. So we set it in hammer mode. We have a long enough uh, concrete drill bit so we're able to get through it. And then what we do is we get right up to the uh, wood substrate and we're checking for moisture levels and uh, how hard the substrate is. So sometimes, you know, when we send this probe through, it goes straight through the OSB board. Uh, and you also want to know what type of substrate it is. If this goes straight through the OSB board, that means it's been wet a lot and that it's compromised. We'd recommend the stucco be removed in that area until there's no more compromised wood or rot. And then they put it back together. You know. So what we'll do is head off and start drilling a house. All right. Okay, so what we have is we want to try to verify what type of substrate we have. Uh, whether this is a full dimensional stone or a synthetic stone. So we, we had a good opportunity here to be able to remove the dryer vent cover and now we can actually see the type of stone we have. So we, now we know for sure or verified that this is a synthetic stone and not a full dimensional stone or a full dimensional stone that's been cut off and then put on as a, a cladding. So if we look at like the pea gravel and everything within this stone, so that tells us that this, this was manufactured in a uh, was manufactured, and so it's what is called an adhered stone now. And then what we have is we can see the metal mesh right here. We can kind of see how thick the stone is. We have the metal mesh. Basically, they're using adhesive or an adhesion type to put it on. We have a. Um, our moisture barrier is going to be a tar paper, 60 pound felt. And then we see that our OSB uh, wood in the back and it's three quarter of an inch OSB. So what we're able to do now is basically we set our drill bit up into this area here and know that we're going in about three inches to get to the OSB. So we can put a marker on our drill bit to say, okay, this is how far we need to go in so we don't go all the way through the OSB board. Because what we're checking is moisture inside the OSB and the firmness of the OSB. And that, that's what we're gonna be checking when we're drilling around. So we'll be drilling below windows and around doors possibly, definitely below missing kickouts. And what we're trying to do is see how much moisture there is, if any. Nice. So they did stop the stucco. You can feel the weep screed, the metal weep screed that belongs there. And then what they did was just go ahead and fill in the gap with, you know, more st uh, stucco finish. And that's what you think the moisture issue is coming from? Yeah, the moisture is coming from 
there's probably some type of compromised flashing detail in this area. Yeah. Water's getting in along the sidewall. It could be backing up too, yeah. so like it hits this joint and then it flows up behind the flashing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's getting in either behind the flashing or it could be getting in through the roofing material somewhere and then it's moving down and that's where our rotted wood in the attic is down there in the indention. So the stucco is supposed to terminate two inches above the roof line. Mm -hmm. And it's an inch which is still okay, but what's gonna happen is this is gonna wick up water. It'll actually pull water up into the wall because it's in contact with the roof. And of course the roof's shedding water. Right, right? yeah. So, so um, it's gonna wick this up and actually break down the stucco over time. Mm -hmm. And then down at the bottom, we're missing kickout flashing. So what we'll end up doing is drilling the sidewall below or the missing kickout flashing and find out how moist the, uh, the wall is behind that. But now we got a good idea that we have about a half an inch thick concrete stucco, traditional stucco. So whenever we go to drill it, we'll make sure we set it to where we're only drilling just a little bit past a half an inch. That way we're able to probe the substrate or the, uh, the, the wood behind it. That's your rotted wood. But it appears that it's getting in up here and then moving down that way. This is just the low spot where it finally decided to drip off. Right. That's where we had those water lines around the yeah. the brick. So that's going to be an adhered stone too because it matches everything else. But um, they took it all the way down to the roof line. That's yeah. Good. Back of the soffit area. chose this location. So the reason why we're picking this location is because the stucco is extending above the roof line and there's missing kickout flashing in this location. So since the kickout's flashing and we've already been in the attic in this area so we know that there's, there is moisture getting through the stucco because we have some wood rot in the attic. So what we're going to do now is drill this location and just verify how wet it is or if the substrate's in good shape. wet so it stuck the probes in there it's wet and he's just documenting the uh, the elevation readings from the survey master looking to see how uh, if the substrate's soft or compromised or if it's still hard and this substrate's still hard so what we can do now is just recommend kick out flashing be installed instead of having to remove the stucco fix the substrate behind it substrate's still good enough that we don't have to recommend repair in this area but we still will recommend that kick out flashing be installed you want to pick a spot around the window now this being a vinyl window even the uh, the nailing flange will be vinyl but we want to get far enough away from it so we'll drill just below the rock this it serves two purposes it allows just low enough that we're going to be able to get the wood substrate behind it but also if we get underneath this ledge we'll be able to hide the drill holes as well and you also see where someone previously tested it yeah, you can see right here where someone's already drilled holes in here once before he didn't even go all the way through. Oh, he didn't? Yep, 
so we know we're in the wood. Okay. Assuming you carry extra drill bits. Yes. Wow. Yep. So what we're gonna do is just clean double it. check it with a different set of probes as well. Okay. So right here we're just double checking it with a different set of prongs just to check our readings. So the so. probes here have a better coating on them. So what's happening is if this was uh, uh, east this would be going through the uh, the foam as well so this has a different coating on it so it's better protected now only the tip is exposed and not the side so this keeps us from getting false readings and so we now we know that this wind is okay so we'll end up checking the rest of the house with each probes okay do you want to double check the top spot up there yeah. too yeah so what we're doing now is he found a piece of stucco and he's it's the same color as the house. It's the same color of the house so he's grinding it up right now with his wrench and uh, then we'll have this on the board on the side and whenever we fill it fill it up with the clear silicone we will at least get a matching color in a perfectly sealed hole. Yeah, so when we're doing the stone portion, we can just use clear silicone because we pretty much hit those spots. But since these are up on the wall, we're just trying to get a color match the best we possibly can. So it's not noticeable or as noticeable. So you want to cut it right in front of that line at an angle. see it's clear we'll so what, what we'll end up doing is we'll fill the hole and then we'll put some of these granules on top of it to hide it a bit yep all right so you want to make sure it's completely sealed and then you'll take the uh some of the no we'll only do that on the color oh the color okay so oh, just... was there only one hole or you get them yeah, both yeah. oh you got them both look at it what we did is we're under a stone now if you just step back once that silicone dries you won't even be able to tell there's holes in it. there had to be a guy mowing a lawn today out in the middle of nowhere Again. I'll get a. Yeah, you can't even see it from the ground. Yep, all green again. So, actually, I can't. I don't even know where you did it. Nice. Can't even see it over here. A little bit right there, yeah. I think we need a little bit more silicone on this one. 
Okay, so today what we ended up finding is we had two windows that had elevated moisture below the windows and what it looks like is just the lack of or failing sealant around the windows. So we're not going to recommend any of the stucco be removed today, but we are going to recommend resealing all the windows with an elastomeric type sealant. So in this particular area we're missing kickout flashing and so this is the one area that we are going to have to remove a little bit of the stucco just so we're able to properly install the kickout flashing material and then reapply the stucco. But what we did is we did some moisture testing below the missing kickout flashing. We didn't find any elevated moisture, but what we want to do is try to prevent any future elevated moisture in that location. So we are going to go ahead and recommend installing kickout flashing in this location. And just kind of keep in mind, this particular one is a stucco specialty inspection, so it's not, you're not licensed by the Texas Real Estate Commission to be able to do this particular inspection. It is considered a specialty inspection. You want specialty training to have the right equipment for it as well. And then to be able to drill holes into the stucco or into the grout lines, we had to get the homeowner's permission. We basically have a document that they sign off on saying it's okay to drill them. And then we want to make sure we do our best we possibly we can to seal the holes and match up the color tones as well. So for if you're needing some type of specialty inspection on the stucco or moisture mapping or moisture evaluation, please give us a call.